Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us once again for Health Professional Radio. We'll be speaking with Meredith Tudor. She's joining us here as a stage three colorectal cancer survivor to share her personal story of learning that she had CRC and how her treatment journey has gone thus far. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Meredith. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Neil, for having me. Tell us a bit about yourself and how your CRC journey began and how it's going. Uh, thank you. My name is Meredith Shooter. I um, am currently 49 years old. However, in March of 2020, I first started experiencing some GI issues. And at that time, that was also the lovely time when our pandemic officially started. And so I dismissed them. I thought this was just you know, stress. We're all under a lot of pressure. Um, didn't think, didn't think much of it. But the issues progressed and um, or didn't change. And so I did talk with my healthcare, my general practitioner about it about a couple months later, including issues such as change in bowel habits, which means anything from one day constipation, one day diarrhea, narrow stools. And I, had, I did start to see some blood in the stool. Mm-hmm. And so I did talk to my general practitioner about this and she attributed it also to stress change in diet and, you know, potentially hemorrhoids from a, my my pregnancy, which was, by the way, 11 years prior to that date. So, of course, I wanted to think it was just that and not anything worse. So I agreed with her and kind of went on and, and dealt with my symptoms that I was having. Um, unfortunately, they didn't go away. And at that point, I, I knew I needed to advocate more for myself. Mm-hmm. And so in November of 2020, I pushed to understand more. And um, and one thing that one night did start this journey then in terms of pushing and advocating, um, I learned a lot in a very short time period um, mm-hmm. on top of, you know, once I was diagnosed and the diagnosis occurred in terms of first having a diagnostic CT just to look at the, the bowel area, which did identify some inflammation. Um, and so then I was quickly scheduled for a colonoscopy. My first colonoscopy, because at the time mm-hmm. I was 46 years old, the age for um, screening for colorectal cancer was still at 50 at that time. And mm-hmm. it, as we know, it just recently had changed to 45. So this was not going to be a top of mind. It was not part of my standard care, um, but it was necessary after the diagnostic CT um, did identify some inflammation and challenges um, in my bowel. Given that you were diagnosed with colorectal cancer at age 46, mm-hmm. what can you tell us about what you learned about the importance of screening and, and early detection? I learned a lot. This was I was thrust into this world of colorectal cancer. I had no family history, so I had no information, knowledge coming into this new world that I was about mm-hmm. ready to, to enter and be now fully immersed in. Um, but now that I'm in it, I, I know a lot more. And, um, and not what I know and having gone through diagnosed, um, being um, diagnosed with stage three rectal cancer, no family history, and all the treatment that I had throughout the 2021, what I learned is colorectal cancer, unlike other cancers or most other cancers, it can be prevented with screening. And that to me was almost like a kick, you know, a shot in the gut, no pun intended, because if I would have known about this or known of the symptoms, I always think, you know, you don't always want to, you don't want to do the what if, but every now and then you kind of go to that that area and think, gosh, what if I had known earlier? What if I had acted sooner? What if I had pushed for colonoscopy or, or or some sort of screening test earlier? Would I be in a different predicament? Because with colorectal cancer, specifically with colonoscopies, that is a screening method that can help prevent cancer. Meaning. As the physician is um, performing the colonoscopy, if polyps are found, they're removed at that time because, one, the doctor wants to investigate to identify whether or not they're precancerous or cancerous polyps. But that means you're getting that removed at the time Mm -hmm. of your screening, which um, I unfortunately did not get that advantage since I was diagnosed um, at 46 with my initial colonoscopy. You said that you knew so little about it that you didn't even have any mm-hmm. misconception, but you've learned a lot. <laughs> right. uh, clear up some of the misconceptions that you learned of so that other people who may have strange thoughts about CRC can dispel those misconceptions. Now that I'm in it, as you said, I, I'm very familiar with this. 
I'm very comfortable talking about gut. I'm very talk, comfortable talking about poop, about bowel habits. These, and I realize these need to be normal parts of conversation. These need to be conversations around the family dinner table. Now that I know this, and the one thing for my family, I have a son who's 11 years old, excuse mm-hmm. me, he's 12, he just turned 12 years old, and he will now need a screening 10 years prior to my diagnosis. So when he turns 36, that's when he will be triggered to have his first screening. Knowing what I know now, I'm going to encourage him, and we do encourage is if he has any symptoms, you know, any strange things happening, we talk about it openly. So I tell other people about the story about what's going around our dinner table. One, I'm asking people, please know your family history, because if you have family history, oh, yeah, Grandpa Joe, I think he had colon cancer. That's an immediate trigger saying, I need to go have a conversation with my physician because I now have um, understanding that I have a family history. And because of family history, that person needs to be screened. E. Colonoscopy is the gold standard, but there's so many other screening options. There's the at-home um, fit test that can be done, the, the, the stool sample test that you can do at home mm-hmm. just to detect and understand there is anything happening. So there's options out there. And at the end of the day, if someone is just so nervous and doesn't want to go forward with that colonoscopy because, oh, my gosh, I have to fast or I have to do this and I'm going to be laying down on the table and everyone's going to see everything, I just finally remind them that I would much rather have a colonoscopy than spend my one year that I did in treatment and now for the rest of my life having kind of hanging as a shadow, am I going to have a recurrence? Is this going to happen to me again? What is my you know, what is the rest of my life going to look like because um, I now have stage three rectal cancer. I am currently two years out from my last treatment. Um, I actually just completed my two-year scan, so I'm happy to say that I still have no evidence of disease. That's kind of what we call, we like to call it, what we say is we're NED, N-E-D, no evidence of disease, so I'm very happy to be NED. And, um, yeah, and my, my hope is, you know, I'm going to continue my surveillance. The plan is always surveillance in that first five years due to my staging. I have around a 75% chance to still be hanging out and, and with everyone here the next, if, if five years out. So I'm looking forward to continuing to, to push through. But um, my heightened awareness of anything ever feels off now, I know right away to to raise the flag and, and ask those questions. How difficult was it to advocate for yourself and ask those correct questions? And what advice do you have for folks out there who are nervous about getting screened for CRC? It's a great question. Um, for myself, as, as you heard, it, it took me a while to advocate because I think my main limiter was I was afraid to hear the answer. And we have to get over that because there's the treatment and the opportunity that we have today to the sooner we can catch something, the better the outcomes are for us. So for me, I was afraid to hear the answer. So I tell people, you just have to go for that answer, whether it's an answer you want to hear or not want to hear. You need to push forward and understand what's happening to yourself. Be your best. You're the best advocate. You know what's happening. You know how you feel. You know when something feels different. And if someone dismisses you, you just have to push. And if you can't get past that that initial person, go to someone else. I've always said, now that I'm in this world, second opinions, get them. Don't even think twice about it. No, once you know, go for that second opinion because more information, more people listening to you, you'll have an opportunity to understand more and actually find out what that answer is. Well, Meredith, it's my understanding that you're affiliated with I Am 45. Can you talk a little bit about that and uh, give us some insight into it? Absolutely. This was a this was a survey that was conducted just to understand um, people's awareness around um, the screening. The, the the age for colorectal cancer screening had moved from 50 to 45, and um, you know, from my own personal experience, I. At that time, the screening was still at 50, and I didn't know to look for and and understand what what to ask for at that time. But what the survey had understood is that there was a lack of awareness around the risk factors, whether or not it was family history, if it was based on your your background um, as well. And, And for me, I had, you know, kind of that fear. I didn't necessarily 
concern myself around the stigma, but fear and stigma for two additional reasons why people may not be jumping in to immediately get that screening once they turn 45. Um, but n me, as someone who has had colorectal cancer, I am currently in um, survivorship and surveillance mode. I tell people screening is the best thing you can do for yourself. A colonoscopy, um, if that is your screening methodology, is also helps to um, prevent cancer at the time of screening because of the removal of the polyps. And to do a colonoscopy versus my, you know, full year of chemo, radiation, and invasive surgery that left me with a permanent ostomy, I would take a screening at 45 any day over everything that I had to go through and what my family had to go through. So I highly recommend it, regardless of the fear, regardless of the stigma, um, and just knowing your family history to, to take advantage of that screening opportunity, which is now at 45. Is there a website where our listeners can uh, get more information that you're aware of? Yeah, there's a couple. Um, within the U.S., there's a couple of great um, colorectal um, societies. One is the Fight Colorectal Cancer Organization, and the second is the Colorectal Cancer Alliance. These are two really strong um, societies within the U.S. that help to support and provide education around colorectal cancer, as well as help to support advocacy um, for the disease. And just and just to help the um, people with questions um, who are in it, and also your caregivers. I mean, that is such a big part of this whole journey, is being able to support the whole, the whole person, including the caregiver. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, Meredith. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Meredith Huter. Audio copies of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.ae, also at Anchor Spotify, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.